we've seen the rise of populism and nationalism um, across Europe, across America and other countries. And it is very important that we make the case that only progressive democratic parties and government have the answers to the challenges that are out there. I think there are more global challenges now than there have been for many years, whether that's conflict, whether that's poverty, whether that's climate, whether that's energy, you name it. Um, but we have to join with our allies across the country, uh, across the world, to make the positive, progressive case mm. for meeting those challenges. Now, we've actually been doing that already in opposition, so I talk regularly to my opposite numbers in progressive parties across the world. We would double down on that um, if we're able to form a government, because that's an important part of the reset here in the UK, but it is also important, as you'll appreciate, um, in relation to America and, and Europe. There are lots of moving parts in 2024. OK, the UK's Labour leader, Keir Starmer, telling Bloomberg that a win for his party in Thursday's UK election will be the answer to rising populism, or at least one answer to rising populism. Keir, Keir Starmer then also telling us about his priorities, as polls predict Labour will win, of course, a landslide victory. We will wait for the details and see what comes to pass, of course, post-July the 4th. Let's bring in Bloomberg's UK correspondent Lizzie Burden for the details. What else did the Labour leader have to say then? Well, another big message is that there aren't going to be any surprise tax rises after the election. The banks particularly worried about a windfall tax. Uh, but it means that he's going to be relying on growth to bring extra revenue for the Treasury. Of course, the Institute for Fiscal Studies says that that's a gamble. And you've also got some of his own officials saying that Labour is going to have to re-enter the EU single market and customs union to achieve this 2.5% growth target if you can't actually get the revenue from tax rises. Now, we've also had Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, out uh, in the last furlong of this campaign. Uh, his message being, do not surrender to Labour. It's interesting, I think, that actually it's only in the latter stage of the campaign that you've had him fighting like an underdog, really trying to distinguish himself from Boris Johnson and Liz Truss. Where was this earlier in the campaign? Uh, but he continues to be forced to defend the 14 years of Conservative rule and answering for Brexit and the corruption during the pandemic. But he insists that he's still going to be the Prime Minister on Friday. Of course, he has to, really, whatever the the polls say. But, Tom, I think it's significant that over the weekend you've seen both the Sunday Times and the Financial Times saying that really it's time for a Labour government mm. uh, and actually echoing the message of Philip Hammond, the former Chancellor who we spoke to last week, saying, yes, the Conservatives could do with a bit of time in opposition to regroup, but it would be unhealthy for democracy for them to be reduced to a rump in opposition. OK, really interesting as we get those endorsements coming through from some of the main national newspapers here in the UK. So Rishi Sunak insisting the Conservatives can still win and the Labour Party as well warning against complacency. Yeah, that is the message from Keir Starmer, of course, as you always remind me, Tom. The scores on the doors are what matter on Thursday in the election. And he does not want the undecided voters uh, not to put their tick in the Labour box. Uh, so that is the Starmer message. Where you heard in that clip him saying, actually, Labour's going against the grain in Europe and the US, it would seem, with populism rising on both sides of the Atlantic, actually a closer parallel perhaps would be reform, this party on the right wing led by Nigel Farage uh, seems to be a closer parallel to what's happening in Europe and the US. I think it would be interesting to see uh, whether Farage would claim to do a better trade deal with the US if it's led indeed by Donald Trump.